getting into it today, tinkering Tom, make this quick. Got some brake pads because my truck is making a metal on metal grinding, not grinding, more of like a skid, like a skid type sound as you drive because I have no brake life left. It's just um, all the pad is gone and now it's just going metal against rotor. So we got to fix that today. Show you Napa parts had it in stock. Uh, I'm gonna go with these. If you guys are looking for a cheap replacement, I'll let you guys know how I'll kind of do a review on this. And uh, once I get into it, I'll let you know how it goes and what to do. This is a 2000 F150 rear wheel drive. Uh, what else about it? Super cab supplies to probably some expedition and maybe similar to some Crown Vic stuff like that. Set. Welcome back to the channel guys uh, It's been a while I had some stuff come up financially I haven't been able to post a lot uh, uh, I had something go down with the Subaru Where I have a crushed oil pan right now So I'm going to have to do a video on that soon By replacing the oil pan on the 2013 WRX uh, but right now I got the brake pads going. I had to replace the drive shaft on this uh, 2000 F150. That's actually a new drive shaft. I actually need to check it out anyways, make sure it's still holding together. This is a Dorman product. My U joint kept coming loose because the last time my drive shaft came loose I think it got deformed just not enough to tell by the naked eye so I had to replace it Christian Brothers won in $1900 I went to Summit Racing and found the unit for 700 it's been doing pretty good nice and shiny got the blue bushings you can tell it's pretty new The transmission just got rebuilt, so I didn't want to risk having a bad drive shaft. This is why I believe my drive shaft came apart. That little opening right there caused it to slip out of place, and then also my needle bearing shot out on the other side, and that's when my drive shaft came loose on the highway. I'm going about 80. So we'll go back to this.
tightening. I kind of lost my tin last time. I just undid those, and then now this is releasing. Should be able to slide these old shoes out. The tricky thing is I'm gonna have to keep that piston compressed. Well, it's not gonna be compressed, but I'll have to compress the piston to get my uh, shoes back in. I heard you can open the uh, brake fluid cap and uh, be able to compress it. So I'm gonna try that in a second. Also, my uh, upper control arms, I got some to replace. From Napa as well. Uh, so I'm gonna be replacing those. I just undid, the, I'm about to undo the cotter pin right here. Just undo this part and then uh, these big bolts right here and it just slides out because these are shot. See the bushings are cracked and this is completely blown out. So that's coming up too. What else do I need to know? I might have to undo this one to get it to move, but I'm not sure about that on the control arm. Would help this free up so it can pull downwards, allowing that to come loose. So it's probably probably pretty necessary. That's probably what I do. These are blown out too, on top of the struts. So. So what warm pads look like? That's uh, warm pads versus uh let's see. Look how sticky those are. So, I'm gonna have to compress that that piston. Another thing to note is uh, Make sure you remember how the software, or the, not software, hardware goes. This thing clip went up in here. It should come with new hardware. This one's a little stuck, but uh, I'll get it out. I'm going to pry on it, probably with some more. Like this. Get it out. Okay. Also, I'm going to uh, 
Go ahead and put uh, this grease, brake grease, on the ends of the uh, brake pad shoes, like that. Also, right there, where you're gonna, or inside of here, on the clips, the new clips, and then some on the slide pins. Just to have a smooth operation. Alright, so I got stuck, but uh, just started hammering on it with the old brake pad and a socket. And every time I hit it, it's squishing out fluid, and I think it's going down. So that's good sign, because I don't have a way to go get tools, special tools right now. But let me get it right now. Okay. Well, the helmet works, but. Alright, so you see that? Pretty compressed. Let's see if they fit before they go back up. Alright, so I did get the brakes done. It was a pain in the ass. Some of the pistons are starting to crumble away. Uh, we need to get a proper compressor tool for the next side because it's gonna probably cause damage trying to do the next one. So I learned from that. Uh, be careful how you compress your piston because if you if it's old and worn out it might start chipping away it should be all right um i just undid the cotter pin down here and then uh as soon as i did that it kind of made a pop so it's going to come loose i think i just need to undo this one so that it'll move a little bit here and that'll be good. Let's see. One last three. Plus the last threads. Okay, it actually didn't, it was just this being loose, so it didn't move. We're good. See, it just does that with the movement of that. It doesn't actually move placement. So, let's see. this loose. Put a piece of wood right here. It's gonna come out. So, let's do the rest of that very carefully. Be careful with this guy, it's under a lot of load. Thank you. 
All right guys, so I was lazy. I didn't want to get out my drill. So I just used a blowtorch and uh, the drill bit 5 16th and I punched it in here so I can put my tube for the brake line bleeding process. Don't do this inside like I did, but that's filled with smoke from the plastic burning. So I just did that so I didn't have to go get my drill. I have to go dig it out of the garage or whatever. Okay, hey, not sure why, but the outside one had the bigger clip, and then the small one that was on this side, on the inside, uh, snapped right there. These are very thin. See how low these pads are? Just about to start scraping, not as bad as the other side. Pull these out, put the new hardware in, just use like a flathead or something. Okay. And then I'll put the new hardware in, get the new brake pads in, I have a kit to try to compress the piston today. So we'll try that. Alright, go in there. Let me see what I can do. Well, that's a setup. Trying to do the uh, upper control arm. Again, 2000 F 150 rear wheel drive. This is the front upper control arm. Passenger side. These cutter pins. Can be tricky. Bent it. Oh. This is like a 27. I don't remember what that one is. 22. Even on the last stud, uh, so when you get it out, here it doesn't fly.
So that's what it's gonna look like after you take out the cotter pin, loosen that to like one of the lower studs and then uh, hammer on this and it's gonna pop, separate, it's all the tension. But be careful, this is gonna fall. It's under a lot of load. So I'll be right back. It's terrible. Got it separated. Just gotta uh, put one 21 there and a 21 here. I think I used like a 7 8 because I didn't have another 21. And uh, these come loose pretty easy. At least the last I did. That's definitely gone. This one you were definitely need to replace your ball drum. Alright, put that loose. Once the bolt comes out, elbow size, you just push that through. Let's put these on so you don't lose them. Just kind of put it loosely on there so you keep up with them. Remember which way they're facing. And, uh, okay. Alright, put that loose. Once the bolt comes out, elbow size, you just push that through. So put these on so you don't lose them. Just kind of put it loosely on there so you keep up with them. Remember which way they're facing. And, uh, yeah. Comparing the uh, other ones here, this is a new one. See, it's rigid, it doesn't bend. This one is completely gone. I got the new one from Napa Auto Parts. You can see there's a ridge right here that matches up with that one. That helps you guide it out. <laughs> 